on the Now Morning Show, Lisa Wickham, Jaron Remy. Rockers. I, 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 I <laughs> was going to say Jaron Rockers Remy. There we go. <laughs> but I think I'll stick with Rockers. Yeah. And Carrie, of course, is down at the Red House. We'll be joining him back shortly. And today's budget day, live on TTT from 12.15. You can tune in. There are a number of panels. The information is on Facebook and on Instagram, so you can check it out and see who's going to be on the panel. But right now, we are talking about making a personal budget. What we do every year on budget day, we check in with Elson James, who is the CEO of JMMB Express Finance. Good morning, Elson. Morning, Lisa. Morning. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Good to have you back once again. So we're talking our personal budget. Give us some tips. What should we be looking at? Sure. Try to keep it short. Three things. One, write it down. I <laughs> want everyone, when we're doing a personal budget, you should be writing down what's your revenues or all of the various means monies are coming into you. And then all the ways monies are leaving, expenses. So you will write down what your salary is, if, you're, if you do jobs on the side, mm -hmm. if you have a little cooking stuff, whatever that money is coming in, you're writing that down. And then you're going to start writing down your expenses, your rent, your mortgage, all of your bills you're going to write down. Mm -hmm. Very important is to also write down non-monthly bills. So sometimes, for example, uh, you have insurance that you pay once a year. Yes. You buy that insurance bill by 12 and put that into uh, your budget so that right. you're ready to be prepared for it. So, so Elson, one, let me interrupt you a little bit. So you're creating like sure. a little Excel template kind of thing, a table you, you, to do wh this? Wh whatever, whatever it is, right? that's, that's why I say write it down. Some of us are very good with Excel and, and the computer. So yes, if, you, if you're good on Excel, go online, um, go on your internet, sorry, go on your Excel spreadsheet and put it down. Right. Some of us are not. If not, just get a sheet of paper and on one side, you divide the paper in half, you write down your revenues, all your money's coming in, and on the next side, you write down the money's coming out, your right. expenses. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like what you said uh, about taking the payments, like the insurance, and dividing it up to, into 12 yeah. months. Uh -huh. we, no, definitely. See, see, what happens a lot of times is that we, we know the expenses that we have every month, your food, your light bill, your water bill, and so on. And then you have these bills that come not monthly, and sometimes it surprises you. So we want to make sure that we're capturing all of your expenses mm -hmm. and you're putting aside money for later on. So insurance is one of them. Right. Another one, for example, that I do is my car. I know that I will have to change tires about once every two to three years. So four tires are going to cost me $10,000. I'm going to divide that $10,000 over two years and put aside a little bit of money every month. Mm -hmm. to know that in two years time i have money to buy tires it's not as in be a physically surprise. put it aside elson physically put it wow, aside that so that's takes what a lot of discipline about. though well the, the, the good thing is the second thing that it brings me to is paying yourself first mm -hmm. so when you're doing your budget on that expense line you're going to put savings which is an expense to you you paying yourself first so all of the things that are there you're going to set up a little account and you're going to put that money in there every month so your savings you're going to put in there every month but you're also going to put inside of there every month your non-monthly expenses, the things like for your tires, for your insurance, for your children's school fees coming next year, right. for books coming next year. So things like that, and you're putting it into that account and you're setting it aside. So you're so saying set up a, you're left with, a separate yes, bank account for that? You recommend it? It'll be, it will it'll be recommended because what tends to happen is that if you see money in your account, I yes. can speak for me. If I see money in my account, <laughs> I'm going to spend it. Yep. So what I like to do is I have my spending account and I open a separate savings account. That's my savings. Right. And I make sure that that card, that ATM card for my savings account is not in my wallet. Right. It's at home, safe. That way I'm protecting myself from myself. <laughs> Good idea. Excellent yeah. idea. Right. So and you said there were two things. Uh huh. Three things. Right. That's mm -hmm. two. So the first one is write it down. Right. Second one is pay yourself first. And then the third thing is, just like what the government is doing, is that you need to start reducing your expenses. And you should start with high interest debt. If you have high interest credit cards, if you have higher purchase, things that have very high interest rates, pay those down first, so that way you'll be able to have more savings later on. Mm -hmm, so three mm -hmm. things, write it down, pay yourself first, and pay off high interest debt. Right. And if you are paying off high interest debt, you know, some people take one loan from one area and mm -hmm. to pay off another loan. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? So, so it makes a lot of sense if you're doing it right. It's called refinancing. 
refinancing or paying off debt with other debt makes sense if you are going to be paying off high interest loans with low interest loans. So if I have a loan at 50% or I have a higher purchase at 50% and I go get another loan at 24% or 20% or at 16% and pay that off, that mm -hmm. makes absolute sense. Mm -hmm. If you have the other way around, if you have a 6% loan and you're using a 24% credit card to pay it off, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So you should be paying off debt with other debt only if the interest rate is lower. Right. If not, chip at it every month. Put aside money every month and pay off that debt, pay off the high interest loan. If you can do a refinancing, it's a great idea, assuming that you can get a lower rate. You know, Elsa, and you said um, the third thing is to pay off your debt, right? Mm -hmm. Reduce your high debt. High interest debt. Mm -hmm. your, well, your expenses. Um, mm -hmm. But I have a fourth one. What about increasing revenue, finding alternative ways or additional ways of increasing no, revenue a, and residual income? No, no, agreed. So, so you're right. The, the, the fourth one would be after you've done this budget and you see what your revenues are like and what your expenses are like, you may realize, hey, you know, things aren't so bad. Or you may say, yo, I have a big hole I need to fill. Yeah. When you, when you realize that, then try to get additional ways. So either you reduce your expenses or you increase your revenue. Uh, for those of you who are skilled in the kitchen, maybe you start a little kitchen job. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, a lot of hype on hydroponics. Maybe you start selling some, some greens and so on. Maybe mm -hmm. you start a car service. W whatever it is to try to generate revenue. Think outside the box. There are tons of opportunities out there with people not wanting to go out delivery services and yeah. so on. So the same thing that the government is going to do today. They're going to be looking at the expenses and trying to figure out how can I reduce my expenses. But they also, unfortunately, will be looking at their revenues and saying, hey, how can I, how can I increase my revenues? Yeah. And that may come into taxes, increase gas prices, and so on. So, so same thing that you have to do at home. Mm -hmm. Look at your revenues, look at your expenses, and try to make sure that one is higher than the other, revenues higher than expenses. So we have like two minutes or maybe a minute and a half sure. left. Any tips for uh, you know, passive income? Um, Oh my gosh, there's, there's, there's quite, quite a few. So, so for me, I would start with, with stuff at home. Mm -hmm. Things that you think that you're good at, try to monetize them. Um, if, you know, if, if you think you're good at giving little speeches, go on Zoom and, and, and send it out to your Facebook friends, see how that goes, and you, you'll be surprised where that, where that can land you up. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're good with, with, with your hands, try putting some of that stuff on Facebook, social media. You know, social media is a fantastic avenue to really put things out to test it. It doesn't cost you much. And you may be surprised the kind of, of, of feedback that you get. If mm -hmm. you're baking, take a picture of that cake and post it on Instagram and put it for $50. See what happens. See that you'll deliver. So yeah. the things that you're good at, try to monetize well, maybe, them. I think, I think you misunderstood the me there, Elson, because I'm thinking sure. investment income, where you don't, you, ah, it's coming in okay. every money month. And money. Correct. And you well, don't have okay, to no. be understood. Understood, heavy understood. labor, because everyone's working, right? So you think no, no, of agreed, residual agreed. income or so, so, or so more or less what to do with that, what, what to do with that savings. And, and, and for me, it would depend on what stage of life that you're in. But you know, if, if you go to look at investments, mutual funds are a fantastic idea. Yeah. Uh, relative, relatively safe with, with, a, with a good set of income. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, I always say take a look at real estate. I've yeah. always used real estate in my past. Real estate, um, yeah. Always, always, always. We're going to have to leave it there, Elsa. No problem. You know no how it is, how it goes, yeah. but it's always a pleasure Let's chatting start. with you. We've got to take it up to the top of the hour. We have All to right, take a break. Thanks. But thank you so take much, care, Elsa and James. That was Elsa and James there, CEO of JMMB. Uh, Express Finance and